Welcome back. I'm Tommy, the Anger Craftsman, and today we have Dana Coppich. Yes. Okay. Only took me 15 fucking times to figure that one out. <laughs> so she is our bookkeeper. Um, she has wonderfully agreed to answer some questions and talk with us today about why bookkeeping is important. Pretty much, she's going to talk to you about how she's going to keep my ass out of jail if I spend the money the wrong way. So stay tuned, and we'll see what we can come up with. So. Dana, how long have you been in the industry? I've been doing bookkeeping and accounting for almost 15 years. Depends on how in-depth you want to include in that, but it's pretty much the only thing I know. Okay. I've numbers, I live, breathe, sleep numbers. Um, you I, are better than me. <laughs> I love I, it. It's, I can barely balance a checkbook, so that's why you're <laughs> here. Um, so why would I want a bookkeeper? Why do I need a bookkeeper? Because you just said you can't balance a checkbook. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but the main reasons being that having your numbers correctly can save you from going to jail, like you said. Having your bookkeeping, your accounting, where you spent the money, how you spent the money, having a professional at least get you set up with that, somebody with experience getting it set up, can just, again, save you from going to jail. It can save you from being in trouble with the IRS, paying lots of fees, saves you from missing deadlines. Paying extra taxes. Paying extra taxes, <laughs> that's a big one. Okay, outstanding. Um, so we're introducing you to, you're used to what, the medical field, you're used to the construction industry. So this working with us is a kind of a, a new offshoot of the, I don't want to call it the construction industry, but into this, this world. Um, you you really haven't seen the lasers or dealt with people with C, th uh, CNCs or woodworking tools or 3D printers or any of that stuff. So yes and no, other than my husband and his best friend having smaller versions of things like this and one of my clients in the automotive world having CNC uh, okay. printing. So I do have some experience but not enough to say I'm a professional in what you do. Oh, we're going to get you there with, okay. <laughs> with, with, with everything. There's, um, and we were talking earlier about some of the, the, the categories, and that's why I, I bring this up, was when I start mentioning certain things, how do we categorize that with uh, QuickBooks, which QuickBooks is what you prefer to work with, <laughs> yes, versus some of the online, what was that? What did I have a nightmare with? Wave? Wave. wave. Mm -hmm. There are so many options out there. QuickBooks just seems to be the easiest to streamline. And streamlining things means saving time, which means saving money. And just overall makes things easier okay. than using one platform. Now you're talking about the expenses. So I always tell my clients, how detailed do you want things? Are you a hands-off business owner when it comes to the books in the sense of you don't care what it's labeled as, you just want to be able to file your taxes at the end of the year? Nothing else really matters. For those types of clients, I would recommend looking at the Schedule C, which you can find at irs.gov and search Schedule C. Okay. There is a Part 2 labeled expenses. Those are the only categories for the most part. There are a few others, but for the most part, the part two expenses on the Schedule C is what your tax preparer needs at the end of the year to file your business income taxes. Okay, so with that, if I look at the Schedule C, and if I'm smart enough, I'll figure out how to link, put a link in to this. <laughs> um, also, before I forget, all her links for her social media, her website, all of that will include in there. Um, it's not like you're stealing my bookkeeper. <laughs> Feel free if you want to use her, use her. Uh, completely up to you, but you know, so advertising, advertising is one. Um, and I'm assuming if I, um, and I understand that everything that we're talking about, uh, is the truth. But when we mention things, it's, you're not going to blame my ass if I said something wrong. Yes. Um, <laughs> for, for the lack of better words, yes. but advertising. So if I look at this and I want to label something as advertising, that's anything that I can use to take photos or business cards. So, yes. Business cards would be one. One that I would look at a common one is a, you run an ad on Facebook or social media. You go to a local newspaper, you 
it's one that gets a little could be either or is sponsoring so if you're sponsoring the local baseball team and in return they're putting your business name on the back of their which we did do that this okay. year so you could be donation could be advertising okay in that sense i'd probably lean a little more towards advertising which okay so let's take that one for example and okay. use me okay they didn't give me a damn receipt am i screwed or do I need to go start knocking on doors with baseball bats? Always get receipts <laughs> yeah. when you can. Okay. Uh, the reason being, your tax preparer might not necessarily require to... I, let me see that receipt. Who did you donate? Who did you sponsor? Okay. Where did that come from? But if you ever get that scary word, I don't like to say out loud, the audit. Yes. That's where you cause problems. Okay. And that's up to the IRS agent on how in-depth they go, what they want to see. And if you say that you sponsored $1,000 to the baseball team and here's my name on the shirt, they still may want to see, well, I don't know that they, the IRS auditing agent might say, I, did, I don't know that they didn't do that for free. So it's always better to have the receipt. Perfect. Um, so I guess I'll be knocking on doors here soon. <laughs> or sending emails out. And let um, me say that too. It doesn't have to be an official you would get from a grocery store receipt or something like that it could be a handwritten piece of paper it could have the date on it okay. i would suggest getting the business owner's signature having a date a business name and an amount would be okay. the biggest thing now again it depends on the irs agent on what they fully they could be in a good mood or a yes. poor mood the I mean, more information the better okay um you know and we obviously know equipment's labeled as assets it because is. assets can be depreciated. Is that the correct word? That is correct. Yes. Um, anything over 500? Is that close or just anything and everything? That one I am not completely familiar on. Okay. There is, that's something the limits change, and I think it depends on your business. I typically do anything. So an asset as an equipment. I typically do anything that you will have for over a year. So equipment could be as much as a monitor that you paid a $150 for. Could be, it's something, okay, so an asset, let me back up. An asset is anything, if you closed your doors today and you were bankrupt, you went bankrupt, you closed your doors, what can be sold for money? That's an asset. Okay. So your monitor, you can sell your monitor. That's Technically. considered a, yes. Um. And I know we were talking earlier other categories of supplies, materials and supplies yes. versus maintenance. Mm -hmm. So a tube, if I have to buy lenses or any of that, that would you would want me to classify that as? For the tube or the... So let me back up. One good thing to keep in mind is just keep things consistent with that. So if you're talking about, let's see, on our... Schedule C, IRS Schedule C under expenses. We have item number 22 says supplies. That's supplies and materials. And then looking at our maintenance, we have maintenance is on here. Damn, where'd it go? We were just looking at it. Oh, number 21. So number <laughs> 21 and 22, those are all fa falling under the expenses categories. Okay. So things that the IRS is going to look for for audits is, is it consistent? So if you had your supplies and materials for 2022 at $5,000, well then in 2023 you had $50,000. That's kind of not necessarily a red flag, but it would be something that they will look at. Unless you're that, showing that much growth in correct, your, if correct. you go from a twenty thousand dollar a year business to half a million dollar right. a year business, then they'll look at that going, okay, that makes sense. Correct. But if I'm still showing I'm a twenty thousand dollar business this year and twenty five this year, and I've got that much, that may send up a red flag. Yes. Okay. And it may, it may, it may not. But the reason I'm saying that is you were asking, so a tube, the tube is that going to be a supply and material, or is that going to be a maintenance? Honestly, for something like that, it may be able to go either way. Okay. I would probably choose it more towards a maintenance because I believe you said it was only every year, every It could be. Years, it's every... depending on which tube, which laser. Um, yes. This one may last two to three years, three to 5,000 hours. Um, but the tube on the bolt could be 10 years or 10,000 hours. or And I just randomly make up damn numbers. But... Um, so it, it, yes. it varies. 
So my suggestion for that would just be stay consistent with it. Okay. If you're labeling it as a maintenance, keep it as maintenance. If you're labeling it as a supply, keep it as supply. Okay. Because again, it all groups back into that expenses category, the part two of Schedule C. Okay, and if you pay attention, and I didn't realize it until she showed it when, when you, if you're labeling your QuickBooks or whatever you're showing, what, whatever you're using for accounting purposes, as long as it almost mimics this, you should be easy or it should be easier to take this to your tax preparer, whoever the hell you use, and say, okay, here's all my numbers. Tag, you're it, go. Yes. So or even if I wanted to file myself. Correct. This is all, for the most part, there are exceptions, other things that your tax preparer will look for, but for the most part, if you stick to these categories, you're golden. And, and I think for this go around, we may do follow-up videos in the future, sure. but I think for this go around, I really like to keep it at the expenses mm -hmm. because that whole what shop space in your house and how much square footage so and all much. of that it crap is. is a little bit overwhelming it, so let, it let's changes often different the tax laws change at least on a yearly basis if not more often than that that's why you need to file find somebody who is a good tax preparer that could be a irs a registered agent or it could be a CPA, a licensed CPA. Okay. That, I know that was... Yes, that was one of the other questions. So that is for the person filing your year-end business tax return. That's where you want to find somebody who is licensed as a registered agent or a CPA. Because for one, that means that they've been doing it or they have done it. They're, they have that certification to back them up. Now... For a bookkeeper, which is me, I, I choose not to file year end taxes at this time. That may change. But bookkeeper, I don't feel that you need to be a CPA or a registered agent. Is that helpful? It could be. But for me personally, I have almost 15 years experience doing the bookkeeping. So that's, I am, I am not a CPA. I am not a registered agent, which is why I can't give certain advice. But I can tell you who to talk to to get that advice. <laughs> And sometimes um, that's all we need. Yes. Point me in the right direction. Yes. You know. So can I kind of leeway into the benefits of having a bookkeeper? You can. Okay. I, I, that was one of the <laughs> keep going. You're, you're on a roll today. So <laughs> this, this is where I tell all of my clients, by hiring a bookkeeper to do your bookkeeping work versus hiring your tax preparer to do your bookkeeping work can save you a lot of money. So I've done research on our local tax preparers and some of the states that my clients live in and their tax preparers. Most of them are in the 150 to 350 an hour to do bookkeeping. Um, I do have clients in Chicago, oh, so shit. you know higher higher end places where they charge more. But let me just tell you, I do not charge $150 an hour, nor should I ever. It's 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 bookkeeping. It's something that. Anybody with practice and a little bit of knowledge can can figure out for the most part. Now, I chose, I went to school, I have an associate's in business management and I have a bachelor's in accounting. So I checked all the boxes, I have the degrees and I have the experience. So I, I can charge less because I, I'm not a CPA and a registered agent. So, which, which I find funny, and I, and I don't mean to interrupt you, yes. there's all the time discussions in the Facebook forums and the different groups on, well, how do I charge? How do I charge? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and it's not just the woodworking world. It's not just the laser world. It's, it, it's, it's everything. How do you justify what your time, your knowledge, skills, and ability, what we used to refer to in, in the military, you know, what that's worth? I know my skills you know, so I say it's X, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to question. I can barely, like I said, I can barely balance a damn checkbook. <laughs> My wife Lois has handled all the finances except for the business for the past 22 damn years. So, you know, I, I'm not the money guy. Okay. I'm the guy that wants to spend money, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I, I look at, you know, what you charge is what you charge. If I'm willing to accept it, then I'm willing to accept it. 
If someone's not willing to accept it, then they're not willing to accept it. But A, me paying her to do my books is another tax write-off. That's, that's very true, yes. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I have an accountant. She does not do, we'll use, we'll use this one as an example for everybody. Last year, and I've paid all year long monthly to an accountant for her to what I call babysit, which is go into QuickBooks and fix if I screw something up or... Check how your things are categorized. Yes, look at how things are categorized and send me an email of my profit and loss statement every quarter. Okay, so I can't read a profit and loss statement to save my life. We already identified that earlier, you know, trying to find stuff. So I know now utilizing you specifically as bookkeeping and that level that I can pick up the phone and I can call or I can send you a text or send you an email. Okay, I just spent $10,000 on a laser and I screwed up or where am I labeling this at or you know, hey, I want to buy this piece of equipment. How am I gonna label that? Where is it going to go? You know, these. if I decide to buy a $5,000 camera to do these damn YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be able to point me in the right direction of, okay, stop, that needs to go here. Yes. But we also need to annotate that because you're gonna depreciate it and all this other crap that goes into this. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Sweet. So, that makes more, that makes me feel comfortable instead of, let's say, my accountant, if I send her an email, she'll answer back maybe in three or four days, or... And charge you $150 or, for that Or email. if I place a phone call, that's $75 for that phone call. Yes. So... And one of the services that I think I offer differently than bookkeepers, you know, or other bookkeepers, I've noticed, is I want to help teach you if you are want, willing to learn. And what I mean by that is you're a hands-on person with that you, you say you can't file do a checkbook but you want to know why I put something in this category and how that's useful to the business so our goal is that I eventually want you to take over your own bookkeeping and have me on call in case you have questions it makes perfect sense to me yes and because I, you want to do that because you choose yes to be but if on. I didn't and I said tag you're it handle everything I just want to be able to ask you questions or tell you, okay, mm -hmm. I just placed an order for another laser or another CNC machine. Yes. Hey, I'm giving you the warning. I just placed this order or I am placing this order or mm -hmm. I just placed an order with Alibaba for a thousand dollars worth of damn cups and I paid through PayPal. So you're going to see all this crap. Yes. One thing, please ask questions. That is, <laughs> I have several clients that didn't ask their bookkeepers or tax preparers questions and it ended them up in a lot of trouble. They didn't know the questions to ask, so that's understandable, but don't ever be afraid to ask questions. You are paying for a service. Ask the questions, no stupid question. See, I couldn't have said it better my damn self. <laughs> um, so other things here, we made notes talking earlier. So my note here is business call business goals mm -hmm. when we talk about business goals in the with the bookkeeping realm and whatnot yes. what are we talking about business goals that is a really good question so every business is different some businesses want to show a large profit and reasons for wanting to show a large profit might be that in their one year three year five year plan you plan on expanding. You want to purchase a building or a new laser or a new piece of equipment that you're going to need a business loan for. If you anticipate that you will need some sort of loan or anything for that matter where you want to show a profit, that's something to tell your bookkeeper and tax preparer. Whereas if you're a business who doesn't necessarily need a loan within the next several years, you might not want to show a huge profit because huge profit means taxes. So let's use the example. You're a business that has no plans in needing a loan in the near future. Instead, you want to pay the minimum taxes possible at year end. <laughs> Everybody, for the most part, for the most part. You'll want to get your profit as close to zero. I know this may sound crazy because you want a profit, but what I mean by that is you want to find deductions. You want to find ways to almost find expenses in a sense. So you had mentioned 
paying your bookkeeper is an expense. Yes. Yeah. The more expenses you find like that, the less you'll pay in taxes at year end. So to recap that, because that may have oh, gotten it, a little... If I, so yes. the way I grew up in understanding paying federal taxes or state taxes is the goal is not to to get money back because that's what we think but when we look at it that's an interest-free loan that we're giving to the government yes. for our thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever it may be the goal is to break break even break zero even. yes not pay not receive and hoard the money ourselves as much as we possibly can and hit that zero mark correct the same yes. thing for us and now use me as an example because i'm open and honest about everything you know the goal is to yes show a profit um but also maybe next year i need to buy equipment or well 2023 we bought three lasers and four 3d printers so when, when you look at that amount of money i'm expecting to show a loss yes last year i showed a profit so i'm okay if this year i show a loss yes and not hold on to that but but next year, this this year, 2024, I'm expecting to show a profit. Yes. And Plain that's and where... simple, because I don't have to buy equipment now. I'm up to speed on equipment. <laughs> I may have to buy a table saw, you know, since I had to buy, you know, a, a fifth laser so that my wife wasn't jealous of my son's eight 3D printers. Gotcha. You know, so it, this, it happens. This can be summed up by saying just talk to your tax preparer or your bookkeeper and have that conversation about your goals. Where do you, it's a brand new year, it's January, it's 2024. Make an appointment with your tax preparer or your bookkeeper and say, hey, for 2024, I'd like to show a profit this year. What can we do? Any tips, any advice, anything that can be helpful? Or, you know, we're not expanding within the next couple of years. Let's try to not pay as much taxes this year. What? let's lower what our profit is going to be at the end of the year. Just have the conversation. Similar to the conversation that we had yes. when you first got here yes. earlier was, okay, my goal is to... Your goal is blank. Yes. Your business goal is blank. <laughs> Outstanding. Yes. Um, so another thing was, to, it says talk about properly operating as an LLC. Yes. So this I figured is, that would jar, jar your memory. So <laughs> it would. So this is a big one. A lot of companies, uh, especially non-huge companies, we'll just say, open an LLC but then don't operate properly. The purpose of an LLC, a limited liability company, you want to limit it, limit your personal liability in the company. You're a business owner. If I walked into your shop today and I tripped and fell and hurt myself, and I'm suing you because you had a rock there, I tripped but over. But I have business insurance, yes. not homeowner's insurance. Yes. I have so business insurance. I guess I should back up with that. To properly operate as an LLC, there's a list of things you need to do, but the biggest ones are have business insurance, have a business bank account, and only use that business bank account for business transactions. Okay, so then going back to the example, I tripped and fell, I broke my leg, I'm now gonna sue you. The way it works as a limited liability, I first sue your company. So your company is, whether you have assets or not, it comes through the company. And then I'm gonna say, okay, yep, I'm suing, oh no, my your insurance is only gonna pay me $1,000. That's not gonna work. Now I'm going to sue you as a person. That's all going to depend on if you are operating as a proper LLC or not. Now, I'm I'm not an insurance agent. I've never been yeah, sued. Take this, I haven't take sued this anybody. With a grain of, take this <laughs> yes. with a grain of salt. Yes. This is not professional <laughs> uh, insurance advice. It, yeah, yes. this is not professional advice. Talk to somebody, whether that be your insurance person, your tax preparer, your bookkeeper, to make sure you are operating as a proper LLC to avoid any future issues like that. But the biggest ones have business insurance. Check. <laughs> and have a business checking account where you can see business transactions only coming in and out. And there is a longer list, so we can talk about that another so time. So <laughs> I can tell you from my experience what I was told about the account. Does it have to be a business you know, my business is XYZ Industries. 
I don't actually physically have to have an account that says X, Y, Z, as long as I have one account somewhere that that money is running in and out of, because for the first however many years, it was a personal, personal account. account because banks want to charge businesses an account. And when you're getting started, you look at, okay, well, I got to have 500 in there at all times yes. and they're going to charge me $110 a month and no, uh, kiss my ass. You're not. No, I, there's a way around this. Here's one account. Yes, it's personal. It has nothing to do with the business. We struggled when somebody would write a check to the business. Yeah. Now I can't cash a check. I can't count the number of times I've gotten a check in hand going, hey, can you rewrite this to me to because yeah. my bank's not going to accept that. So um, this is where I would suggest possibly talking to your lawyer about it. Okay. Your lawyer or your tax preparer may be able to answer that, but I'm one I like to play it safe because when it comes to somebody suing me, I'm going to want them to go after my business because I own a home. I don't yes. want them to take my home. I want them to take my, my business assets first. So it's it really gets kind of fuzzy with all of that, but do as many of the things to check off the list of operating as a... Where can I find that information? Your lawyer. Okay. Your lawyer is a good place to start. You may be able to ask... Well, where can I find the... 30 things that I need to do to operate as a let proper me, LLC. I'm is sure there can, a place? Let me see if I can find you that list. So if we find it, we'll link the damn yes. website <laughs> into the things because I'm kind of interested. thought I was doing it's the right thing. Yes. And, and this conversation, I, I, I hope everybody's enjoying this and you're not bored out of your mind. <laughs> and if you are, then you're a dumbass for watching it this long. <laughs> um, you know, I know I've learned a few things. I've learned a few things that I wasn't prepared to learn. <laughs> So outstanding. Um, we kind of already hit when I want to talk to my tax preparer or the tax professional or whatever term you want to use mm -hmm. on certain things that are outside of your purview. Is that the proper term to use or when the hell do I want to not talk to you, but talk to my tax preparer? I would say always start with your bookkeeper because that's going to be the cheaper option. And I'll be the first to tell you, if I don't know something, I am not going to make it up. I'm sweet because that's your money. That's your business. I'm not going to tell you the wrong thing and it end up hurting your business. So probably start with your bookkeeper. Okay. And if I don't know the answer, I, you may be able I, to point me in the right direction. Yes. Yes. Okay. And a no, lot no, of don't, don't talk to your accountant, talk to your attorney. Don't call H&R Block for this one. You need to talk to yes. this person. So yeah. you'll help guide me down the path to keeping my ass out of jail. That's correct. Sweet. Okay. Yes. And one so we see where out. this all leads to is just keeping my happy ass out of jail. <laughs> yes, exactly. And one thing, there is nothing wrong with hiring your tax preparer to do your bookkeeping. It just goes back to how much are you willing to pay? Because for the most part, the tax preparer is going to charge you a higher rate yes so something yes that's why. so if you don't have a bookkeeper your bookkeeper is your tax preparer start with asking them questions then but go with the cheapest and work your way up no <laughs> I, outstanding and i know there's probably a hundred other questions out there that people are sitting at home watching this going oh, why didn't he ask this why didn't he ask this why didn't he ask this okay i i got it okay trust me this could take freaking three days of filming to do this and, and, and talking back and forth, but we're going to start small right now. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I look at it, your pieces of equipment are labeled as assets mm -hmm. for me, computers, stuff like that. I guess I would want them or plan to categorize them as an office expense. You want to add a vacuum. It's an office expense. It's not a piece of equipment. It's not a supply. Yes. It's an office, you know, your notebooks, your paper, but for us, if I want to buy 2,500 board foot of cherry, that's supplies and materials supplies because and I'm materials. taking raw material, I'm turning it into something. I'm not paying sales tax on it. That's your state sales tax is a whole nother topic. <laughs> We're not going to freaking touch. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, but a lot of us will order tumblers or supplies from other small businesses and things like that. That's all supplies and materials. Sometime down the road, we'll figure out the whole supply and material cost of goods. 
that's a whole nightmare in itself trying to, to make that make sense, at least to me. That's um, where Bookkeeper comes in hand. They, it, it, <laughs> why do you think you were here? Yes. <laughs> I don't have to think about this crap anymore. All I got to do is call, text, or email you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just spent $1,000 at Alibaba. Tag, you're it. Yes. You and put it wherever the hell you want it. ask these questions. If I can kind of go off on a little side tangent. The whole reason We're full I of tangents got... here. <laughs> so I have the experience. I have the almost 15 years. It has been in working for other people in the corporate setting. The whole reason I got into this owning my own business as a bookkeeper is because I had somebody who wasn't asking enough questions. It was a friend of mine, hired a bookkeeper, thought the bookkeeper was doing everything they needed to. Turns out they weren't, and they almost lost their business over it. Let's just say that. So ask questions. Please ask questions, oh, always. Um, you know I'm gonna ask questions. I mean, I know, what was it, a year or so ago, we were doing pistol grips for 1911s, mm -hmm. and I, you know, before we met y'all, you, I picked up the phone or sent an email. Okay, look, I make these for this type of firearm. Can I write that purchase off? And my accountant was like, yeah, you can, as long as you do X, Y, and Z with it. Good. Keep asking the question. So <laughs> you're going to get those because we're going to pull some stuff out of our rear ends and go, okay, how do I do this? How do I make this all make sense um, when it comes to keeping the books and keeping accurate, you know, and, and, and I go back to, I was amazed that QuickBooks can categorize and subcategorize and, you know, we have 3D printers. Great. I buy hot ends all the time for them and I buy filament all the time or I buy resin. I would really love to know how much damn money I'm spending in filament that's and resin. Categories. So yeah, that's, that's, that's fantastic for me. Some of y'all may not have that detailed of inventory or, or whatnot, but you know, if you've got a CNC and you're buying router bits, I know because we burn through router bits, it's a consumable. So I know you'll teach me or show me where when I start, you know, from because I only get C I only get my CNC bits from one guy. So every time that that comes through, you will see. And here's a shameless plug for Cadence Manufacturing and Cody CNC Engraving. I only buy his bits. There you so go. it's always going like. to be labeled. Uh, you'll see it yes. come through. So you will know that is router bits or that CNC bits. Okay, so what we could do with that is a subcategory. It's a supply and material, and then a subcategory of the router bits. So then at the end of the year, when personally I give you one piece of paper at the end of the year and say, here you go, give this to your tax preparer. And what it is, is I, all of those subcategories I minimize. So now all of that is lumped into your supplies and materials because your tax preparer doesn't care how much you spent on that. No, so you see she cares supplies. Yes, so you see the breakout. But she I see sees... I've spent $500 in bits this year or 4000 yes. in filament or or what have you. And then we start scratching our head or Lois looks at me and goes, well, where the hell did all this go? <laughs> you know, and I can I can hold up, excuse me if this gets a little close, I can hold, hold up these silly little dragons that we print and people spend money on and go, well, it all went to that. There you go. So, you can make it happen. Okay, outstanding. And again, as we wrap this up, thank you for taking the time. I truly appreciate you putting, or me putting you on the spot and you <laughs> accepting it. Um, you know, this was kind of a last minute in, in, in improv thing. So I am very thankful and very appreciative. And again, we'll link all of her information. If you choose to contact her, please feel free. Um, worst case, she's taking my money. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Um, if, if, you know, so far so good, I, you know, we're recommending her, um, hit her up, email, call, text. I don't know how the hell do you want to be contacted? Uh, the, the phone number will be a call or text. The email is fine. Facebook messenger is fine. I'm very flexible with that. Whatever works for you. And the state doesn't matter for state, her, oh, yes. for her purposes, anywhere in the, the U S anywhere in the, even overseas, I have a client I help in over the season. Okay, so, so if you're watching from Canada <laughs> or Australia, New Zealand or England or wherever the hell anywhere. you are, you can contact her if you choose you to. 
Uh, again, I'm not getting a kickback for this, just like everything else. I really don't give a crap what you do. <laughs> you know, and, here's the, but here's an opportunity. And I do offer free initial consultations. What that means, call me, let's have a conversation, see if I'm a good fit. I'll be the first to tell you, you know, I don't think you need me, at least not on a monthly basis. Let's, let me help you get set up to where you need to be so you can do this yourself. Let's just have the conversation, just see if we can benefit each other. Which is perfect, which, you know, it, it kind of comical is, you know, that whole, whether you felt comfortable being here or dealing with us, because, you know, there's certain clients that walk in the door going, you need to hurry the hell up and leave <laughs> because when I'm uptight, there's a problem. You know what I mean? So uh, hopefully we've made you feel warm and welcome here. Um, you know, yes, there is not a damn thing professional about us, but we've already gotten, I don't know how many inches of water. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to buy a canoe now so I can paddle my happy ass through the neighborhood because we have rivers running through it. We've gotten so much rain here. Um, so again, hope you've learned something. Uh, you know, if you got questions, hit us up in the comments. Don't question me. Send her the info. Ask her um, because I'm going to give you poor damn advice. So other than that, I hope you all have a great day.